Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to all the new folks stopping in. Thanks for tuning in. Okay, we're going to get back on this little 15 that I'm chopping all the pieces, making into a short shaft. Um, but it kind of threw a wrench in the system, and you'll see that in the video. And so we had to do some other things. So um, we're going to get back on that and see if we can't get this thing all shortened up and straightened out. Make it fly right. That's what we're going to do. So um, let's get on that. Well, I almost forgot. I want to say a big thank you for everybody that told me what this hideous looking saw is. It is a ice saw for cutting blocks of ice, which would make sense because one of the earliest known businesses here on Kodiak way back before refrigeration, the island right next to us, uh, adjacent to Kodiak, the city of Kodiak, real close to the city of Kodiak, is Woody Island. And they actually had um, an ice block business there where they cut ice blocks and everything out of the frozen lakes on Woody Island, which is right next to us, and sent them packed in sawdust, sawdust, um, down to California and so forth in ships is what I was told. So that's a vintage ice saw. Ooh, look at the two fusses on that thing. So, almost forgot to say thank you, but I appreciate it. I didn't even think about something like that, but that's what it is. And I want to say a uh, big shout out to... Mark ran from Belgium, over there where they made some really good Evan Rude OMC outboards back in the day in Johnson. Belgium. So, big shout out to you and a big shout out to Catch Your Phil from the Gold Coast. Right down under there, mate. So, big shout out to you, mate. So, again, thanks for the replies on the saw. Let's get on this 15. Yeah, I think I got it. Um, this one was just being a pickle. What I'm going to do is put like one bolt in there and test it and make sure that we're getting all the gears right. The g -g gears. So I'm going to put one bolt. And the old gal and see if she goes through the proper gear sequences. Okay, so now it can't raise up on me or anything. We're in neutral. How do I do this? And then down there we're in neutral. Uh, I backed up so maybe I can get it all in. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I think we can. Alright, so I got the one bolt in. Finally got that stupid little bolt that holds the gear shift connector what I was doing I was actually using the shift handle I was raising that bolt I was raising the shift rod too far up my groove was only like half I needed to actually bring the shift rod down um, anyway it's hard to explain but that's what I was doing there's forward neutral reverse so let me throw the rest of the bolts in this puppy and we'll see if we get her back in the tank and if we have a short shaft. Be right back. Okay, we got her in the tank. Give her that.
do it. We know we got a decent water pump and an impeller in there. So what does it mean? What does it mean? I'll tell you what it means. It means, in my opinion, I do believe. Two thirty-three at the bottom spark plug hole. One ninety-eight at the top. Two thirty-four at the thermostat cover. So what we got most likely going on? I'll check the thermostat, but most likely it's the grommets under the power head. So, I do believe it's time to go off with its head. And let's take a peek at the grommets. This is a good running little motor, so I'm not going to send it out into the field, especially up north remote, with cooling issues. And this one's got them. I'll be back.
Okay, so we popped the power head off and I was kind of surprised. Um, the blockage is not real bad. I'm thinking this might have been, well, I'm kind of sure it was probably folded over. Um, and so she was blocking a little. But the exhaust side, unless that piece was doing something, which I don't think it was, that's part of the gasket. But th this might have been very well been in there blocking some stuff. But it's not real bad, so I got me my new gasket. Goes on this puppy somehow, I think, something like that, yeah. To the base, so I got to get things scraped up and cleaned up. I got to get new grommets in here. Or at least that one I'm going to do, and then I'll trim trim the exhaust gasket a little bit. And we'll get her back together and see what happens. I'll be back. It's name Dead Tune to the outside. The dead leaves lay on the lawn. For they don't have trees to hang upon. To the outside, the dead leaves lay on the lawn, for they don't have trees to hang upon. Name that tune. Okay, I thought I'd show you this on these AV mounts, these little rubberish motor mounts that go in, there's three of them around here that holds the lower cowling to the leg. I wanted to show you the sequence of these. See, you got that big washer there, I already put that there, and up under that is the small washer. So the sequence for that, putting those back on, because some people get a little corn fused. Um, once you get the rubber, the power head back on there, it's small washer down, big washer on top, nut. That's the sequence for it. Small washer, big washer, nut. base to leg gasket. Cleared a little bit of blockage in the uptake grommet. Um, power heads back on. Um, now it's just a matter of putting little things back on like the hoses, your noses, and the recoil starter. I already showed you that. Already got the throttle cable hooked up already. That's just a snap-on deal. That's just a snap-on. So, let me get the starter and all hooked up. I'll be right back. Okay, you're going to see what I'm going to see. Let's do her up.
Now for you folks that own these, you see this water draining out of here? That's your forward compartment there. You want to make sure this hole is always open. Every time you take this thing in and out of the water, you should see a good half to three quarter cup of water run out of that thing. So boy golly, we've got us a shorty. She's a shorty on the shaft. Got her all put back together. Uh oh, I got some goo. I got some goo on her. But she pees cool as a cucumber. Let me get you back over here, over here. Well, we cut her down to size, didn't we? Show that there. Rude, little Evan, rude. But uh, I figure it, it had to be that little folded over piece of rubber on that grommet. One thing I should have printed out to you is that... Uh, that grommet shouldn't even be sticking up like that in there. Um, it, sh it, it should be shaped like an upside or like a top hat upside down. There, there should be a lip around there, but there shouldn't be no pieces sticking up hanging like that so that once the power head's put on there, it mashes them down. I think it was blocking almost half of that hole. I've seen them a lot worse than that. I've seen them where both the uh, water pickup tube and the that little short piece of copper discharge or exhaust tube water exhaust tube or whatever you want to call it I've seen where the grommets are completely full I mean just no water virtually was getting through maybe just a, a little spittle here and there so this one wasn't even that bad but uh, ran hot so we can't have none of that up your hair around here, you understand? He said he's taking it up into the bay. Well, up there. Never been, well, I've been up near there, but uh, yeah, I could say this with confidence. There's nothing up there. There's some fish canneries, and that's, that's, uh, that's it. That's what's up there, some fish canneries. Um, so, I don't. I did. I wanted to make sure that. Well, I want to make sure every motor that goes out of here that I sell, um, and I am selling this one to the fella, um, as he put it to me. The checks in the mail. We see. But anyway, they're going up there remote like that. He's, he's got to have a, a kicker he can depend on. Uh, some of those operations up there are, are, well, a lot of them are very family orientated. They take their children, teenagers, and young young peoples up there and, and fish as a family and stuff. They need a good, good, reliable little kicker. And I've got everything greased on this one, everything lubed up, transom clamps, the tilt, everything's really nice on it. Um, and should be a good reliable little kicker cools very well pumps a lot of water now shifts smoothly and she's a short shaft oh let me show you that i can show you i can turn that out to you now here's what i was talking about on this center piece that you're going to remove from the long shaft you're going to remove that um, so this piece is
oh, about five inches that you're taking out of there to make it a short shaft. So the reason why you want to, you don't want to sit there and bang on that water when, you, when you're splitting this apart. You don't want to sit there and just bang on that um, this piece and try and get if it's been in salt water for sure, right? Fresh water, I, I wouldn't say it would probably be that big a deal or that big of a problem. But if they've been in salt water and sitting and you know these things are 30 something years old, or whatever, when they've been in salt water like that, you will not be able to bang this piece out of there with a hammer with this water tube that you're going to turn into a short shaft because what you will do is as you keep banging on it it will there's a I don't have one laying and uh, eh, sort of like it but as it stabs there's that boy I don't know what you want to call it that bulge um, it's not quite like that it's it's a flange there's a flange that the water tube is stuck in that way from the top down there's a and there's a flange there and then the grommet and if you keep banging you'll bend that flange up straight enough to to bang the water pickup tube out of that hole the whole thing will come out and yes you can kind of stick it back up in there that's not the proper way of doing it. And the reason why I said just get you, take a couple uh, cold chisels or something that have a little, about a half inch of thickness to them, hammer them in there because I don't know if you can see it real good, but you're not getting that out of there. There's the water pickup tube right there. And you can see that's welded. So you've got four inches of solid dissimilar metal corrosion holding that section of water tube in there and you can bang all you want that is not coming out been there done that don't do it you ain't gonna get it take your sawzall take your two cold chisels or whatever a couple plastic chainsaw wedges get you a half inch of space enough to get your sawzall blade use the long sawzall blade and just cut it off you're gonna have plenty of water too so you won't get this out um, it ain't coming out. So that's what you do. Cut it with a sawzall, get your space, take it apart, make it a shotty for shotty. And uh, so, got this one done. This guy, I think he'll be here in a week or two to pick it up. Um, but I got my good customer, Timmy. And I've got two 30 Johnsons out of there. So I'm going to take this one out and bring the first of those 30 Johnsons in here. We're going to get on them. I want to get him squared away because sometimes they wrap up. He's out commercial halibut fishing right now, and sometimes they wrap that up sooner. They get quotas, I think. They're, they're, you know, each boat is a, it has a permit for so a block, so many pounds, and, and sometimes they get that pretty quick. And so even though he told me it normally takes about a month, it's been a week or so since he dropped them off, and uh, I want to get them squared away for him because he bring the, the fresh halibuts he bring the crab so we're gonna get his in here he next in line anyway don't put that on me well to all my mystery motor guessing folks nope I've had guesses of it's an old Chrysler nope I've had guesses well that's one of them old Johnson's or old white Mercury's nope I've had guesses of Yamaha I've had guesses of it's an older Tahatsu or Suzuki. Nope. That's not what it is. 
What were some of the other guesses I had? There was some uh, force. Nope. So, for all those folks that been guessing, there's the hood. That's the bonnet off of that motor. Nobody has guessed what is painted on the side of that bonnet. It's a mystery. It's a mystery motor. Nope, no one's guessed it so far. Been a couple come close, I'd say, but nobody has guessed what's on the side of that bonnet. It's a mystery motor. I think for this video, it's going to be a wrap until I get them switched out. And stay tuned. Thanks for watching, and as always, that's one more hack. Oh, how you like my haircut? Fred did a good job, huh? Yeah. So, that's one more hack from Kodiak. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe to Inside Outboards with your host, Cody Bass.